Francis Ngannou showed a level of patience and evolution that we were examining for a while now, ever since the first Stipe fight. He not only outstruck Stipe Miocic, he outwrestled Stipe Miocic from bell to bell. He nearly shut him down the entire time. Stipe landed a right hand and a few leg kicks throughout the fight, but everywhere else, Francis Ngannou took over and dominated the greatest heavyweight of all time. This is the patience that I was highlighting on my latest breakdown of Francis Ngannou. He's not the wild man, he's not the brute that everybody thought he was based off of one performance against Jarzina Rosenstreich or even his performance against Stipe the first time. In every other fight he has ever had in the UFC, he has shown this level of patience. Look at the Junior Los Santos fight, look at the Cain Velasquez fight, look at the Curtis Blades rematch. This is how he fought them. And this is the Francis Ngannou that needed to show up in order to defeat Stipe Miocic. We cannot judge a fighter off of their last performance. And this fight was a bit ironic because Francis Ngannou lost the first fight because he was overzealous and he had moments where he thought he was going to knock out Stipe Miocic. In this fight, Stipe Miocic got knocked out for being overzealous looking for the KO. After dropping Stipe, Ngannou lands an uppercut and looks to intercept his angle with a looping left hook, but he overextended into it. Stipe, with his pivot right cross, catches Francis Ngannou very clean toward the temple and actually gets Ngannou's attention. This is probably the biggest shot Ngannou's ever taken his entire career. But Stipe got overzealous and lost composure. The heavyweight champion of the world, one of the most experienced heavyweights in the UFC, the guy who has defeated Francis already, lost composure in front of him. He looked to get the knockout after seeing a quote-unquote rocked Francis Ngannou, he lunges in with a jab, squared stance, squared shoulders, and his right hand low. There is no defense in what Stipe is doing. It's all offense. And Ngannou, with his longer reach and better precision, catches Stipe on the way in with his check left hook. And you have to note here that Stipe missed his jab. It went right under the chin. There was a difference of precision between the two fighters. And the overzealous, the loss of composure, is what caused Stipe to get caught by that punch. It's so poetic, to be honest, because Ngannou for the entire fight had all the composure in the world. He looked like he was the veteran in there. He was fainting so he can get a reaction out of Stipe so he can set up his light kicks, knowing that Stipe is very susceptible to them. He was keeping calm for long-range boxing, mixing up head and body strikes, notably one of the best moments of the fight where he landed that overhand. He actually tripled up his jab, went two to the head, one to the body, Stipe backpedaled away from all of it with no urgency of defense. He most likely did not think that Francis Ngannou would set up something with such craftiness. And when Ngannou targeted the body, he matched it with a long step in, planting himself for the perfect distance of his right hand over the top, noting again that Stipe did not really keep a tight left guard. And when I saw this moment, I knew Stipe Miocic was waiting on Ngannou to tire himself out. I knew what the game plan was already. He most likely thought that Francis Ngannou was going to come out there and blow his wad. So he waited on Ngannou to do everything. He waited on Ngannou to do the work for him, and then he capitalizes in the next round. Because Stipe did nothing in the first round, practically. He tried one single leg takedown, which got stuffed and reversed on, and he landed a few leg kicks, scaling the cage, waiting for Ngannou to do something. Between the first and second rounds, you noticed Stipe's corner telling him, him, you gotta put up some offense in this round now. But the moment he got dropped in the fight was when he was sitting back again. He was just waiting on Francis Ngannou, the longer, more powerful striker who took this calm approach. When you're shorter than your opponent, you want to be able to get in on him and push the pace on the bigger man. He put no effort, no energy on making Ngannou expend his energy. Ngannou took the center of the cage and became the assertive initiator in the fight. He is essentially doing all the work, and because he can dictate what work he's going to do, he also is dictating how long his cardio is going to be able to hold up. So with these long-range punches, he was able to reach forward with the right hand, not necessarily looking to land with meaningful power, but to set up for a shift left straight, not necessarily a jab, right down the center as Stipe put up a right tight guard. He thought it was going to be a looping punch instead of a straight punch and gets caught clean. Most guys would have been knocked out by this blow, but it just goes to show you how durable Stipe Miocic is. And when we look at the high kick specifically, Francis Ngannou showed different level of technique that I've never seen him do before. He went for a down look left high kick in the southpaw stance, not his usual orthodox stance. And this got nearly the perfect reaction out of Stipe Miocic. Stipe dropped his hands when he thought the kick was gonna come low. Stipe had low hands and looked to check a potential leg kick. Look how he lifts his left knee. He left his head pretty open, but good on him, he was able to step back away so the foot or the shin would not connect clean on him. It was the toe that landed on his chin, but still wobbled him. 
that is a great amount of power to get caught by someone's toe from a high kick and get stunned at that magnitude. And we have to talk about the single leg takedown and how Ngannou reversed it on him. Ngannou went for a jab to the head and right cross to the body. Stipe goes under all of that for the single leg takedown, turns the corner to get Ngannou closer to the cage, and he's not necessarily trying to push Ngannou to the cage, he's trying to secure the takedown off an angle. Ngannou not only using his size and strength to fight off the smaller man, he uses the correct technique to elongate the takedown enough for his strength to take over this entire sequence. He drives in the right underhook and lifts Stipe's chin up. This relieves the finishing of the single leg takedown, forcing Stipe now to push forward, getting Ngannou's back toward the cage. And when he does this, Ngannou pushes his head down so it relieves the leverage that Stipe has for a single leg takedown. And this is the perfect position by balancing on Stipe's head with his hands, he uses his strength and power to hop to his right angle, causing Stipe to follow his leg if he wants to hold on to it. That is the difference in strength right there. He's literally hopping with Stipe holding on to his leg and he power sprawls on top of him, pulling him into the mat. There's the power right there, man. From here, Francis actually shows a quickness that heavyweights don't normally have. He turns over on top of Stipe, gets the body lock, and Stipe is looking to defensively wrestle now. When would you have ever thought that Stipe Miocic would have to defensively wrestle against Francis Ngannou? I would have never thought that in a million years, man. But look what Ngannou does. He doesn't just use his strength against Stipe Miocic. Notice how he kicks out Stipe's left foot, making him balance on his right, and Francis rotates him toward the cage. From here, Stipe puts more weight on his right foot, and Francis trips out that foot, pulling him into the mat, taking out his entire balance. This is actually a technical takedown from Francis Ngannou, and it scares me for anybody else he's going to fight because we know now he can wrestle. We know now Francis Ngannou can wrestle, and that is super scary, man. Not only adding light kicks, not only the patient boxing, the guy can take you to the ground and stuff your takedowns, and he starts landing hammers on Stipe Miocic. Stipe actually showed not great ground and pound defense. He doesn't pick his hands up at all. Even when he starts getting up to his feet, his hands are not up high, guarding his head at all. And that is pretty much the end of the breakdown, man. Not a lot of action that went on. Just a few moments in the fight, a lot of patience. But this is the scariest man in the world. This is the reason why I've always said for years now that Francis Agano would defeat John Jones. I thought Stipe would be him. I honestly thought that Francis would lose composure in the fight, but he never did. How I thought the fight was going to go as to why I picked Stipe Miocic was, I thought Stipe was eventually going to put some offense on him and land with that right hand, causing Francis to be overzealous and not hold his composure, being as inexperienced as he is in the sport. But when he did get caught by that right hand, he looked for the check left hook, and that surprised me. Francis Ngannou even surpassed my expectations, and a lot of people thought that I was overblowing. Ngannou's skills. A lot of people thought that Ngannou was not skilled at all, and I was just being a quote-unquote fanboy of his, but hopefully now everybody sees how great Ngannou really is, and he's even better than I thought originally. That's insane, man. So great performance by Francis Ngannou. I'm so happy for him. He just took out the greatest heavyweight of all time in devastating fashion, and he is probably lining himself up against Jon Jones. And the reason why I'm going to say he has to fight John Jones next is because Stipe needs time off. Getting knocked out that badly, you're going to need more than half a year off with not even hard sparring. In that time, we can have Ngannou versus John Jones. Stipe gets the immediate title shot against the winner of that. Or should I say, Stipe gets the trilogy against Francis Ngannou because I do think Ngannou knocks out John Jones, as I've always been saying. I never questioned Ngannou's takedown defense. He's never shown to me to have poor takedown defense, ever. The reason why I got taken down by Stipe Miocic in the first fight was mainly because he was starting to get tired. It was not because of his skill or because he didn't have the strength to fight him off. He always showed that, ever since he came into the UFC against Curtis Blades. So that is what's next for both these guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, make sure to thumbs up, drop a comment, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.